So I think I've had a slightly non-traditional career right from the beginning. After graduating from IIM Bangalore, uh, before which I had gone to IIT Bombay, I joined a startup. It was a no-name company called Computer Point at that time. Two years after that, I joined Wipro. Today, it's a household name, a very large company. After spending 15 years in the IT industry, doing sales, marketing and product management, I got an opportunity purely out of chance to join, uh, to get into venture capital. In Wipro, I was part of a joint venture that Wipro had with Acer. And after I had left Wipro and uh, got into Planet Asia, the folks who were from Acer who were part of that joint venture had started a venture capital fund called Acer Technology Ventures. And they invited me to join that to look after investments for India. And that's how I got into venture, purely by chance. I liked uh, that experience. I liked the breadth that one saw of various companies and startups. And so I decided to pursue a career in venture capital after that. And in 2006-07, teamed up, uh, co-founded Inventus along with my other founders. I really enjoyed working with entrepreneurs, interacting with them. They energize you, they make you learn so much. I was learning newer and newer technologies every day. I was reading a lot to get to know different uh, areas of technology and uh, the startup world. I also felt that if I start my own fund or be part of a fund where I am a founder, I will have the freedom to pursue the type of investments that I want to pursue. I won't be dictated by an overseas entity. And so it gave me the freedom to experiment, to do investments that I personally like to do. I'll say it is the founder that matters, not the most, it's only the founder that matters. After you've uh, evaluated the founder and like the founder, you then look at other things. Then we start digging deeper. So we are very conscious of the fact that the startups we invest in must make uh, a higher high return for us. What makes us uh, feel that we can get a good exit is the sort of differentiation that the founder brings to his venture. So we look at you know how different, what are the USPs, how superior is his product or his or her product or service compared to competition. If I were to summarize, the founder is the most important, that's the first gate. If we like the founder, then we get into evaluating these other three aspects of the size of the market, the differentiation and the potential exit opportunity for us. I like the passion, I like the dedication, I like the fact that he has spoken to many customers and understands his market very well. I like the fact that he understands his competitors very well. I look for fairness. Uh, has he held 99% of the equity with him or has he distributed it well among his employees? In terms of the network that the founder has, we look at what sort of board of advisors is he able to build? What sort of networks and relationships does he have? And last but not the least, we look for integrity. Integrity is a critical part of what we look for. Networking is extremely critical to a founder. An uh, entrepreneur is somebody who's selling all the time. So he has to sell to higher employees. Why would they join a no-name startup compared to large multinationals? So he has to sell, him, sell his vision, his passion to the employees to hire them. And a better network helps him interact with more people to get employees. He has to sell to investors and the more he networks with investors, the more the chances that you know, they will give him a decent reception. We meet entrepreneurs who've reached out to us off the cold, but if they came to us through a referral, that is always better and a referral comes through a network. Getting customers, it's not easy for a startup to get their first customer, their first few customers, especially if they're in the enterprise B2B space. And having a good network, where they can reach out to potential decision makers in their customer organizations and sell to them. That again is where the network comes into play. So given that the entrepreneur has to sell all the time to employees, to investors, to customers, and that the selling process ha is helped by the fact that he has bigger networks, networking is extremely critical to the success of an entrepreneur. Access to networks is one of them and good incubators provide access to these things, to good mentors, to good uh, you know, customer introductions, go to market uh, help, etc. So I think good incubators, good accelerators certainly make a difference in helping the entrepreneur. So I think both are equally important. You have a Faltu idea, then uh, no matter how good you pitch, 
you may even succeed in convincing an investor it's not going to succeed if it's not meeting a customer need customer requirement just raising money is not success having a idea that doesn't meet customer needs is a certain sign of failure but having a great idea and not being able to pitch it may also result in failure because having a good idea is not good enough like i said you an entrepreneur has to sell all the time so he has to sell to his investors to sell to investors to raise money he has to make a good pitch and if that pitch is not a good pitch he won't be able to raise money investors like us have very short attention spans unfortunately and in the first 10 minutes if the entrepreneur hasn't excited the investor he may still spend the other 45 minutes or an hour listening or hearing but he's not listening and chances of the entrepreneur raising money are low so a good pitch is very important but just a good pitch without a good idea is won't work i think bangalore has some unique advantages yes other metro cities also had it companies that came and set up there but if you look at go back to the early 80s wipro was set up in 81 Texas Instruments came in 84 85 so you had the multinationals coming and setting up in Bangalore once those companies came a virtuous cycle set in because people worked in these tech companies for 5 8 years then got out and started companies of their own and as they started companies of their own they had worked in Bangalore they started those companies in Bangalore so one is you got the entrepreneurial pool coming out of these companies as a result of this vast IT base in Bangalore tech talent also got built up over here and as tech talent got built up more and more cutting edge multinational companies came and set up base here because of the talent because of the talent entrepreneurs were able to get good resources higher good resources so a virtuous cycle set in and today bangalore is 50% of the startups of india and so to the founders who come into this program i would say be hungry be like a leech suck in whatever you can because every tool uh you find or get that equips you for doing better in your journey will be well worth it you go through a high you'll hit a low you'll hit another high you'll hit another low and having this community to talk to to share your experiences to uh you know share your moods your disappointments your success your joy is very helpful so um yes apart from the tools that the entrepreneur would get through a program like this the network that he gets or builds from the other participants will also be a very helpful network